Yeah. He tried to kip out of the thing. <laughs> no, the carrier. Or we moved he was about on, to kip though. out of it on a ledge, and I went, well. And I trying to him. get out of a plastic bag. Pretty it's like, you can't carry it around <laughs> in that shit. <laughs> Listen, it can hold it. It's totally fine. <laughs> What's going on? The YouTube stream has not started. The oh. YouTube stream has not started. So where is this? Is this streaming anywhere? Probably str- we're on Blaze? Okay. Oh, well, you know what? Uh, look, Blaze. folks, in Bla- can we just restart it all? Yeah, we can do yeah. that. Let's restart it all. Let's let's do it again. <laughs> well, I wonder why. Louder with Crowder is brought to you in part by Crowder.com. You'll look better, but more importantly, you'll feel better. Unless you have COVID, then you'll probably die. Crowder.com. Oh, that's good suckage. That's delicious. That is yeah. uh, that is uh, sip number two. Hey, if it, just so you know, the technical difficulties really quickly for people on YouTube. No conspiracy. No. Quarter Black uh, Garrett is sick home. Yeah. He does not have the COVID. You so, sabotaged. Uh, we have people here, of course, helping filling in. We wish you the best, uh, Quarter Black, with your quarter yeah. sickle cell when you come back in. Quarter sickle cell. Mm-hmm. That's so terrible. And expect him in a St. Jude's uh, advertisement before uh, oh. your local movie showing soon. He has an adorable blanket. Yes. <laughs> Uh, no, so that so no conspiracy there. We just have, have had some uh, technical issues, but uh, Matt, we have uh, a lot to get to today. Donald yeah. Trump Jr. is on the show. Boom! Really excited about that. He's going to be commentating some fights this weekend yeah. between Evander Holyfield and Vitor Belfort. So uh, place your bets on the roided up athlete of your choice. And that's not just in case you want to come at me for defamation Mm-mm. or slander. I don't know which one is written versus uh, uttered. Yeah. Um, Vitor Belfort tested positive in the UFC really? several times. And Evander Holyfield was part of that steroid ring. But, you know, they both seem ah, like decent guys. Right. Just, you know. Mm. All natural. Um, and, one, and we are going to be talking about quite a bit here today. Yeah. One thing that I really wanted to touch on, and I don't know if this is, you know, trending like Chris Pratt, who didn't do anything wrong, but everyone just <laughs> looking for a scalp on a slow news day, right. is CNN has been talking about this all day. The ICU bed shortage, the nursing staff shortage. Why everything that you, and I, I shouldn't speak in absolutes, but why absolutely everything you have been told <laughs> is a lie, is wrong. A lot of people out there think COVID has happened, yeah. hospitals have been overrun, and that's why there are no beds in the ICUs. That's not true. And I will explain to you point by point why that is the case. Mm. We'll also be watching the uh, the new Matrix trailer. Yes. Um, because my team hates me. <laughs> we have to do something <laughs> like that. Too. So uh, before we get Dave, actually, Dave Landau, how are you? I'm good. You're so- ahoy. 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 Uh, you have a, an announcement to make. I do. But first, actually, just uh, went out before the show, Gerald A. Oh. Has an announcement to make yeah, of his own. Is that okay, Dave? We, we good? Yeah, yeah, yeah go, go for okay. it, man. Yeah, cool. So, yeah, yeah my uh, my wife and I are expecting kiddo number two. Hey! Right. Really? Oh. Congratulations. I knew this. Yes. 
We're gonna have another uh, another kiddo coming up. How far along are you? Uh, very early on in the process. Okay. I think it's like uh, right around that eight to ten week range. Okay. You should know these things more precisely. Yeah. Well, you knew, that's early. You I knew know, a know. couple weeks ago, right yeah, around we, your last vacation. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we did yeah, exactly. If you could time it back, I think Branson. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, that's <laughs> because be Branson story. is the ro- yeah. is a storybook romance. Who hasn't made a baby in Branson? That's we went on down to the Dolly Parton Rodeo, a uh, subsidiary of Medieval Times. <laughs> after uh, you know, I, I get a little wet after watching Yakov Smirnoff. Yakov <laughs> Smirnoff, uh, uh, acrobat extraordinaire, listen, listen. and then going on the non-gambling riverboat. Listen. There are tons of Crowder fans. You can fans gamble just not with money. Yes. You can get the chips. And then I saw That's the great. Ripley's Believe It or Not, which gets the crappy leftover. Like, oh, is that, uh, is that the uh, stuntman's Judge Dread costume? Yeah, wow. I, I didn't believe it. Uh, so, no, but con- <laughs> <laughs> congratulations. Hey, guys, you can leave a comment. That's the best yeah. thing you can do. Well, we haven't. Obviously, usually you comment on, on, yeah. on issues where we ask you guys questions. But come on. Let Gerald know that you yeah. love him. Give him a congratulations. Good. Nice comments. Yeah. Please. And, uh, well, Dave and Dave also, Dave also okay, has yeah, yeah. a major what, Dave, announcement. What's here? Oh, uh, well, we should definitely reverse this. Uh, I'm going to be on a fishing show. Hey! Okay. That's cool, too. Yeah. Oh, oh, he's a fan and he's watching. Um, no, it's here. It's this, uh, check out BasquatchHunter.tv. It's on the Pursuit channel, which you can check local listings. Sorry, next week. I'm on the season finale. Uh, oh. It's my buddy Mike McKinstry. It's a really, really fun show. And then it'll be up on YouTube after that. And you can watch me looking for bass. Did you catch any? Unlike, uh, no, I, <laughs> Are you uh, supposed to reveal that? Or is that like the big thing? He was looking for bass. You were looking for nookie. So yeah, I was going to do that. And then I held off because yeah. I got a little eyeball from Steven. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, I did. I caught. I did catch fish. Yeah, oh, well. I, I'm not gonna say f- many fish. Yeah, well, oh, well you, know, you know, Gerald caught a little more. Hey, promo code is uh, Crowder Comeback. You get twenty dollars off a one year subscription right yeah. now. If you want to join at Mug Club? Just until and tomorrow. Dave is also uh, in uh, Spokane, uh, the Spokane Comedy Club in Washington, this Friday and Saturday at seven thirty and ten thirty. Okay, oh. before we move on to Larry Elder being hit with eggs. By a racist in a gorilla mask. I don't think she was a racist. I just don't think she could afford a new mask. Yeah, it's still, uh, right. still racist. <laughs> it's still wrong. I mean, could you imagine it's a little someone bad. threw eggs at Barack Obama in a gorilla mask? Like, oh, right. President. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it would just be right. awful. <laughs> and rightfully so. Like, oh, President. Oh, banana. Oh. Like, seriously. It's yeah. just everything about this is ridiculous. Uh, also, I've learned that uh, 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 private security in some cases are useless. <laughs> but before <laughs> yeah. we get to that, Lefty TikTokers and the nursing scandal right now. Oh boy. Uh, leftist TikTokers, they want you to know that you can refer to your daughter. This is where we are, okay? It's offensive uh, to refer to your daughter as princess. So I don't know if this is considered an unpopular opinion, but if you have a daughter, you need to stop calling her princess if you do. The way no. that Disney has branded the princess is based on her beauty as her most important asset. This Good. term also encourages the damsel in distress that needs to be rescued by a man. Shut and it, it doesn't cupcake. focus on their intelligence or integrity or any other character trait. Why don't we call girls scientist, engineer, doctor, like... Why My does wife it have plays to a good doctor. Cutesy, yes. Like, oh, princess. What <laughs> it really involves need? a hammock. Like, no. My daughter's father called her princess yesterday, oh, no. and I had to lecture him again because we do not use that term in this house. My daughter's father. Even my own sister. I hope you. Have called her <laughs> I hope you threw your tuna casserole against the wall. Don't call her that. Maybe I come across as very controlling. Yeah, I wonder why he I left. Think it's a very harmful word, and she shouldn't look up to that term. <laughs> That's I a, hate you. Yeah, but, but, no, because we wouldn't want uh, we wouldn't want anyone to perpetuate, of course, the stereotype of princess. That's not something that we would uh, we would ever want there. Uh, yeah, oh, you can be a little more timely no. there, uh, no. Tim. With yeah. the, uh, well, as long as you're a man. Yeah, as long as you're a man, it's just like, oh no, listen, <laughs> listen. This is just. Uh, I believe I'm a woman. Really? How many transgender individuals mm-hmm. uh, are saying I want to be a woman? Why? So I can become a scientist? No. They want to become a woman so they can have big old fake tits and clown makeup. Let's be really clear about it. Okay? And all of a sudden, it's like, oh, Caitlyn Bruce Jenner, is now Caitlyn Jenner, is dressed like a Barbie, wearing a corset with those dimensions, and 
is wearing a princess tiara. Oh, but yeah. hey, well, no, that's fine. Just not for biological women. Well, do you see the example she used? She's like, oh, princess, what do you need? And she's like, why can't we call him scientist doctor? Because I don't call my son, oh, scientist, what do you need? Oh, well, I don't like, that's call, him, that's he, the most. I don't believe he's thing. ever been to an accredited university. Yeah, no, I don't yeah. believe that she has a degree yeah. for me to call her a it's doctor. also yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit early to be called. And I love how she hey, referred engineer. to her husband. What? Yeah, her husband as my child's father. Right. What is it with labels in you? Like, is that not appropriate? Are you not husband and wife anymore? That's fine. You could say. Oh, my God. You know, I wouldn't be. I don't know. Well, well, I hope if you leave I feel that you uh, don't try and take any uh, said finances from your child's father, since you're such a strong, independent Yeah, woman. that's true. No, no, no. Don't no, need rescuing. No, I want my cake and eat it, too. <laughs> I just think everything's terrible. Don't call them princess. Look, do you know why? Me do you know why particularly men will call their daughter princess? That's what's most common. Yeah. There's a great book called Wild at Heart, actually, that you should read, and it yeah. talks about how every young man needs a battle to fight, a dragon to slay, and a princess to save. That's also why women have been told for a very long time, until recently, that you don't just want to give it all away; that you want right. the man to pursue you. Fathers call their daughters princesses because they want to elevate them, and they hope that women think highly of themselves, they're young girls, and they develop self-esteem so that other men end up esteeming them and treating them as a princess. Yeah. That's the idea. The idea is they're saying, you're so special, I'm going to treat you like a princess. To act as though that comes from anything other than love. By the way, by the way, there have been princesses, there have been queens who've been very accomplished. Yes. I don't know why you're knocking them. She just yes. doesn't like Disney. Why did you just say that? Many liked horses. And they liked horses? And long hair. They had good quotes. Let them eat cake. <laughs> That's that all I got. Some are better than others. It all just right. doesn't matter. You're just pretending to be offended by something. Right. And then you're going on TikTok trying to lecture that you're a white woman. Stop acting like you're not the second worst. <laughs> Your daughter, if you continue down this line, is going to be the absolute worst child. In of the course. order of worst, it goes South African prince. There you go. Princess. Uh, <laughs> South African princess. Yeah, your daughter's going to treat men like garbage yeah, because yeah. of you. And be single until and she's 35. And then never be happy. And then overvalue her, her, her sexual value in the marketplace when she's yeah. in her 20s. Because she's going to think that, uh, well, I believe, I identify as a chemical engineer. But you're not. No, maybe biochemist. But you're none of those things. You got a gender studies degree and you dropped out of that and then demanded someone else pay your student loans. Are you calling me princess? That would be a step up. I think you should shut up. And hopefully find a nice home in a gutter. Now, uh, New World <laughs> Order is something that does bother me. This is trending number three right now. What? Because someone said the quiet part out loud. Uh oh. Doctor, well, Australian doctor. I don't know. I don't know. Does that count? I don't know what kind of vetting they do there. Come on, it's yeah. a penal colony. <laughs> yeah. What are you get? What are you getting? A major in rape and a minor in 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 uh, keel hauling? Ugh. So <laughs> that's what I call my daughter, major rape. Yes, major Jeez. rape. Uh, but hey, women can be majors too. Yeah. Yeah. What well, you got a problem a with majors? Person. I'm sorry. The rank is what threw me off. So Australian public health chief Dr. Kerry Chant just said this. This is why it's trending. These words, actually. Not at the moment. Um, we will be looking at what contact tracing looks like in the new world order. And yes, it will be pubs and clubs and other things if we have a positive case there. Our response may be differently, different if we know that people are fully vaccinated. First off, good on her, good on all of Australia for getting the first signer we've seen without man hands. There you yeah, go. Yeah, that is nice. That is nice. That is better. a, I don't, I don't want to say normal. Yeah. At, at least uh, 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 an average Signer. It just doesn't need to be like a Seinfeld episode. Doesn't, yeah, yeah. a non three ring circus. Right. Signer. I still think it's <laughs> fake. Yeah. Uh, I just think they, they said this out. Well, usually I don't like to get into conspiracy theories yeah. because people, the term New World Order has right. often been attributed to people who are creating conspiracies or wrestling. But she said this out loud and uh, didn't someone else, wasn't there someone who talked? I feel like this is something that has actually been talked about. You know what this is? This is ivermectin for humans who won a Nobel Prize as an antiviral. And this is inhalable, or these are the tablet steroids. So let me show you. I was going to do this anyways earlier. See this? See this, Fauci? You see this, Bill Gates? I'm going to kill those prions, you b murderers. You're going to hit me with a bioweapon, you monster. You want to suppress me? You want to kill me, you son of a b You b damn demon. You think I'm easy to kill? <laughs> you damn monster. It's a hell See, of a plug for Topo. I know, right? 
Nobel Prize winning for humans. Nobel Prize winning for humans. Nobel Prize winning for humans. Nobel Prize winning for you. You know, if it weren't oh, for the I'm movements. Glad that's not a beer. I thought it was. <laughs> if it weren't for the movements that actually can't be caught by a 60 frame rate. Right. Um, everything you just said is entirely right. <laughs> And he's talking about, he went on to talk about the New World Order. Yeah. That's what he said, in the New World Order. And she'd be like, ah, I misspoke. What I meant no. is one world government. Oh, uh, uh, so, uh. <laughs> look, this is something they're talking, and we're going to get to uh, some more what, what they've talked about on CNN today. They yeah. want to force you. Let's, let's not be confused here that the left believes uh, in your right to choose when it comes to anything yeah. outside of murdering a baby inside the womb. They don't believe in your right to choose when it comes to what car you can drive, what kind of food you can eat, huh? what kind of place you can live in, what kind of transportation you can use. Drinks. Um, drinks, big Sodas, gulps. Yeah. Uh, nor what you can do as it relates to experimental, uh, experimental to new vaccines. Look, this is the only thing anyone... If anyone talks about the vaccines, this is the issue here. I think that if you, you weigh the risks and rewards just like anything else, yeah. and you think that it's worth uh, the reward, you should take the vaccine. Yeah. And there are some people who cannot. There are people with actual medical conditions like GBS. This is something I ran into with my wife. It's a nerve condition that she woke up from. It was triggered by anesthesia. Yeah. She can't even take a flu shot. These things exist. And anyone who says that we have long-term studies, you're lying. It can't. You can't. Now, it doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with Correct. the vaccine. Yeah. No one is yeah. saying that. But the problem is when you go out and you so overreach that it's a lie that people can recognize. Well, guess what? That's when you create people who don't trust you. Right. And we'll get to some of those demographics here in the country in a second. Uh, but first, this is something that was, um, I would say, surprising to me that it was surprising to our government, but it's not. Yeah. <laughs> the Taliban announced their new government leadership. And then uh, Anth <laughs> Blinken, I swear yeah. to you, Sorry. That Blinken was absolutely shocked at their lack of diversity. That's not a joke. Here's a clip. Today, the Taliban named a new interim government. We're assessing the announcement, but despite professing that a new government would be inclusive, the announced list of names consists exclusively of individuals who are members of the Taliban or their close associates, and no women. It just makes <laughs> common sense. The affiliations and track records of some of those individuals. We understand the Taliban has presented this as a caretaker cabinet. We will judge it and them by its actions. The international community has made clear its expectation that the Afghan people deserve an inclusive government. Yeah, well, look, <laughs> one in one hand and shit in the other, Blink, and see which one fills up first. Are We're you? really hoping the Taliban includes someone. <laughs> this is the difference. In the United States, someone loses their office if they don't f fervently support a George Floyd mural. Yeah, in the exactly. Taliban, they're still enforcing Sharia law, and they're going to stone women to death if they're even accused of adultery. And he, like, he's, oh, hopefully we see some uh, good representation. Uh, do you have any idea how much they're laughing at you? Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, she can't, well, the women can't drive to work. That's oh, why they can't. Oh, well, it's, it's a transportation issue. Yes. I love it, how he's focused on the lack of diversity. And the fact that he the just fact, said on, that. Not I'm on the sorry. fact that there's a country run by terrorists. With what? our tanks yeah. and Blackhawks. What the hell is the matter with you? Yeah, they're terrorists. You they're not the diverse. <laughs> They have our Black Hawks for crying out loud. Do you have any <laughs> idea what they're going to do with the women? I can show you the world. The Black Oops. Hawks. <laughs> Shining, shimmering. Bye bye. They're going to toss them from Black Hawks. This is the actual leader, the supreme leader, sorry, supreme. of the Taliban, according to uh, Taliban. According to former Vice President Joe Biden. <laughs> Why give them the respect of pronouncing it as they would? I think it's funny. It's like a joke to me. Yeah, to us, but to, not them, to they're, him. They're oh, dead course. serious. Yes. They're, they're like, we don't want to mispronounce We don't want to mispronounce We the could people. offend the guys who took all of our weapons and murdered people. Right, yeah. We wouldn't want to offend the people who mutilate their women Ugh. and uh, 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 allow them no rights whatsoever. So the Talib Taliban <laughs> Supreme Leader, <laughs> Hayabatullah Akhmud, you know what? I can't pronounce it. The Taliban, the asshole leader of the Taliban, there you go. said in the future... All matters of governance and life in Afghanistan will be regulated by the laws of the holy Sharia. Okay. Hey, by the way, remember when uh, uh, the left said that a Sharia law is not a thing because yeah. Dr. Ben Carson said, I actually believe that anyone who's 
agrees with Sharia law that it's in, incompatible with the Constitution. And uh, you know why? Because Islam, actually, particularly the Quran, is a political prescription just as much as it is a religion. It yeah. outlines a system of laws, and that is the reason that entire area of the world has never gotten it right yeah. when it comes to women's rights. They can't. I know someone will send me a picture of someone in Iran in the 70s wearing a one piece. Right. Okay. Yeah. They had like three good years. <laughs> it was downhill from there. Check in now. Yeah, there was a point when that happened. Yeah, for like three good that's years. Yeah, that's the it. Shah. Three good years. Write a song about that one, Sinatra. But, that, but even making that point to you, it's like, yeah, you're just proving exactly what my point is. Right. They jumped right back onto it and ruined their lives. Well, not only do they not have women in government, they also banned uh, the Taliban, women from playing um, sports, with the exception, of course, of the all-female uh, Taliban softball champions. So they're pretty, yeah, they're good. Oh, yeah. Those yeah. are... Uh, oh. <laughs> the one on the right almost looks like Ma uh, Maddie. <laughs> They live in a nice, not, not in a bad way. They live in a nice three story. Oh, geez. I'm sorry. They were they thrown from a nice three story. Oh, oh that's right. Yeah. Yes. That's. They should have known when they were asked to volunteer to play softball. I mean, I mean look, kind of a, can you guys let me, can you guys let me know? Just comment. Is, is this, oh, I was watching this yeah. going, are we beyond parody? Yes. Did anyone out there, here's my question, did anyone out there actually expect the Taliban to be inclusive? Not even getting to uh, menstruating persons. Did they? <laughs> did we expect them to be inclusive to women? Who would you know? Well, and I know you're thinking synonym. No, it's not. No, apparently. Did anyone <laughs> actually out there expect them to be fair and to give equal treatment? Now, I know most of you are going rhetorical questions, Stephen, and don't get so smarmy in the comment section. So my follow-up question is: Did you actually expect the left? to expect equal treatment of women. Do you think they actually expected that? This is what surprises me. Like, were they actually blindsided? Uh, like, oh, yeah, hey, Mr. Taliban. Uh, hey, what, 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 what? what? banana. <laughs> Sorry. No, that's the, uh, that's the uh, Trudeau song. Oh, my bad. Yeah. Oh. I heard the, yeah, I heard the people also getting the knocks on the door in the dead of night and getting shot in their beds were also a little pissed off that there wasn't more diversity in the assassination squad. You know, the so. taliban -ish show on the Peacock has a lot of diversity. Oh. oh and yeah. I think it's important. We have to give credit where it's due. It's, it's true. true. <laughs> Why would you ever even bring it up? That's the problem with America. We're yes. so woke, we've become just a clown circus. Do you understand what is required to kill, but to win a war. This is the thing. I don't think Americans have the stomach for it. We may not have the time to do the whole woke military segment today, yeah. but I don't think that America, do you know what a war, do you know how you win a war? You go in, you destroy all enemies, you level everything, you enslave the women, which is not, I'm not saying it's right. This is what happened though since the beginning of time yeah. up until the evil empire that is the United States. You take all of their resources and you make sure that it is so brutal, so swift that no one else even dare speak up about challenging you. Oh, I and thought instead we go in and we get we don't take their resources, we don't take their oil, we try to build up a democracy, and we ask for nothing more than the land in which to bury the dead who died for them. That's I, I, our military is capable of winning wars. I, our people at the desks, the people like Blinkens, yeah. don't have the stomach for it, and I don't think that Americans have the stomach for winning a war today. No, uh -huh. we used to have people commit suicide because they could not go to war because they were not found capable. They didn't have the eyesight or they had a body, right. body condition. We've gone from people now, just they, they, they don't care. They don't care what it costs to be free. The older brother in the Wonder Years had flat feet, couldn't yeah. join the army. He was depressed for like a week. Yeah, he was. You know I got flat feet. But I mean, then he bounced back with those Golden Graham commercials. He did. <laughs> so, <laughs> And using the F word a lot if you see the movie uh, Monster Squad. Yes. Uh, yeah, it's... Yeah. Uh, Watching Wayne just throw out <laughs> ra gay slurs is really something. Well, at least Matt Damon stopped. So here's another Amen. thing. Amen. Larry Elder. A woman. Yes, a uh, menstruating person. A person. So Larry Elder, who's running for governor against yes. Gavin Newsom, uh, he's been on the show quite a few times. I'm still, I won't have him back until he grows back the mustache. He <laughs> was touring a homeless encampment in Venice. First mistake. <laughs> But an insane so person. So he was walking through Venice? Yeah. Yes. Just any part. Yeah. <laughs> he was in the greater Los Angeles area. There you go. Exactly. Uh, and I warn you that this will be upsetting. 
a, le- I don't know what you call this person, a person in a gorilla mask attacked Larry Elder, a black candidate for governor, by whipping eggs at him and then assaulted uh, his security guards who were nonviolently protecting him all on camera. And as of this show right now, as the airing of this broadcast, it is 10.39 a.m. Eastern. I don't think that anyone has been arrested. There haven't been any charges. Press, I don't, it's, it's on camera, multiple angles. Here you go. Here's the gorilla mask. On the right, throwing. Missed. That was throws like a, throws like a girl. Quintessential feminism. Commits assault and then is offended when a man says stop committing assault. All right, we won't call your daughter princess. I <laughs> got it. All right. Come on, guy. You go through the security should be going through there oh, and yeah. just laying people out. A white woman yelling at a man, black man, you're not black enough. Right. Dress in a gorilla mask. It, would the defense of hitting What her is going- it wouldn't have been more offensive had she gone Larry Elder? Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> I've taken a lot of LSD, and I don't know what's real anymore. I really don't. Every day I wake up, I'm like, "That happened, right? Was that a nightmare?" It's a, it's a lady, I on a, a white lady well, in on. a gorilla mask, and then they will Maybe. say all, the, oh, well, all domestic. They will say are. that all political violence is committed from those on the right. This person did it to the leading Republican yeah. candidate yeah. in California, in plain view, with several people backing this broad, I assume, in the gorilla mask. Up and then assaulting security officers. Again, it's not that they did this. It's that the left fears no accountability, yeah. no retribution whatsoever, and that is not a good path to go down because guess what? Someone's going to start dishing out retribution soon. Government, you need to do your job. Media, you need to do your job. Or the Americans who are tired of getting physically assaulted will do it for you. And I pray that it doesn't come to that, but it will. Yeah, absolutely. I'm kind of offended that she missed from eight feet. Well, she's a menstruating person. <laughs> yeah, these aren't close. great athletes. Yeah, exactly. I, she, Larry Elder should have turned around and like, time of the month? <laughs> yeah. Should have just belted her. <laughs> yeah. been like, I'm sorry, I thought you were a gorilla. Yeah. That's exactly what I was going to say. Just Would you have a defense? Myself. Like, if you got hit, first off, you've been punched. Are you allowed to punch back? Is it legal in California? I don't know. Well, California no, you is can, really stupid. Yeah. But nonetheless, could you be like, oh, I thought I didn't know you were a woman. How am I supposed to know? You're behind that mask. You'd be anything. I'm sorry, princess. Well, next time I'll get it right. Ah, why? Put a tiara on that gorilla mask. I would have just acted like it was real and been like, is that a gorilla riding a bike? (laughs) Wow. (laughs) That's insane. Just not even be a... Just stop. Well, Larry Elder, Godspeed. Yes, well, it's like I hope dressing he wins. up though as a Nazi and calling someone a Nazi. They think they can do whatever they want, yeah. and then they just throw it at you that everything you can't call a girl princess, but you can dress up like a gorilla and attack a black man. I'll That's give you one even acceptable. more. Obviously, the swastika symbol, yeah. which really shouldn't be as offensive as it is because it was no. originally an Indian. I like sorry, to take my shirt off. An Indian symbol for peace. Games. No, it was an Indian <laughs> symbol for peace. The swastika. Then it was co-opted. Yeah. However, the hammer and sickle, which resulted in far more deaths. Now, let me be really clear: Nazis bad. Deaths from Nazis, bad. Complete condemnation. What I'm saying is that was a co-opted symbol. It wasn't originally a Nazi symbol. Right. However, the hammer and sickle is responsible for just as many deaths, and you can go to breweries and pro-labor protests and find the hammer and sickle everywhere. There is a brewery in Traverse City, Michigan. Yes. When we were driving through, and I took my grandmother-in-law there. She was 92. And she looked up, and she saw portraits of Stalin and Mao, and she almost had, almost had a tear brought to her eye because she was around for it, by the way, Russian, and said, uh, I, I've got to get out of here. Yeah. I've got to get out of here. Why don't we treat them the same? Yeah. Tens of millions of people died under that symbol. Actually, hundreds. It's more like hundreds. I was trying yeah, to hundreds lowball if you're, it a little no, you're, <laughs> let's, let's, let's lowball it and call it uh, somewhere between 50 and 100. And 100, yep. Well, that's it's exactly also, right. look at the skull and crossbones on my lower back. Yeah, well, I mean, that's just to let people. It's a pirate, and also my booty hole's poison. There <laughs> might be some plundering afoot. <laughs> there is going to be pillaging. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh! Uh, this Arr. is something else. Before we move on here, Dave's tramp stamp. <laughs> Again, I want to get into the nursing sh- shortage issue and the swastika uh, and, and some stories here that I encountered, and also uh, uh, Gerald did. Yeah. Uh, but uh, before that, look, we have a this week in Biden. Before I go to this, I have never seen a president. I think this is something that is that, that cannot be up for debate. I have never seen a president. In my lifetime, 
And I've watched every single major presidential debate, by the way, going back to, I want to say, Mondale. Uh, I used to watch them on C-SPAN. And really? You watch them online. Yeah, just because I wanted to see what they were about. Yeah. I've never president. seen any president abdicate his responsibility as much. Every single time Joe Biden goes up and speaks, and he'll be going up and speaking yesterday, and that's why I wanted to, uh, speaking up yesterday, he'll be going okay. up and speaking tomorrow. He spoke yesterday, he'll speak tomorrow, which is very busy for him. Yeah. Uh, I mean, for a lot. 10 minutes, two days. So I want you to watch for this when he comes up later today. He always says, they told me, I was told Afghanistan, not his fault. It was other advisors. COVID, not his fault. They told me this. I'm not allowed to do this. Yeah. I have to do, do this. My advisors have said you have to do X. And so this is just a small portion. We could do a clip of this for 10 minutes. You can say what you want about Donald Trump. Say what you want about George W. Bush. They did not say, well, I'm basically a puppet. So let me, let me make this as clear as I can this week in Biden. If you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, then you ain't black. You guys are bad. I'm not supposed to be answering all these questions. I'm supposed to leave, but I can't resist your questions. I'm supposed to stop and walk out of the room here. I'm going to stop. But with your permission, I'm going to walk into the room because I want to say hello to all. I'm not, I'm not supposed to take any questions, but go ahead. I'm not going to answer Afghanistan now. They gave me a list here. The first person I was instructed to call on was Kelly O'Donnell of NBC. I'll take your questions, and as usual, folks, they gave me a list of the people I'm going to call on. So, uh, Jonathan, Associated Press. I'm not going to punish anybody, but everybody should pay a fair share. And I can lay out for you. I won't now because they'll shoot me. But here's the deal. Thank you. And I'm happy to take questions if that's what I'm supposed to do, Nance, whatever you want me to do. I'm sorry, I'm going to, this last question I'll take. And I, I'm really going to be in trouble. I'm sorry I'm going to get in trouble with staff. I don't do this the right way. Jennifer Jacob, Bloomberg. I'm going to get in trouble with my, my staff. Yeah, go ahead. But I pretend that you didn't answer you. that America is back. Yes. Uh, at the same time, you've kept in place some Trump-era steel and aluminum sanctions. And I wanted to ask you, when you're having these conversations with European allies who are very concerned about these sanctions, how do you justify that? And what are your plans? 120 days. Give me a break. Need time. <laughs> if you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, then you ain't black. The buck stops... So um, <laughs> he's totally in control. Totally. Uh, we have Donald Trump Jr. coming on in 15 minutes. So we're oh, going to move 15? some stuff to okay. a, uh, Mug Club, by the way. You can yeah. join Mug Club. Crowder, come back, get $20 off. Uh, CrowderShop.com if you don't want to buy yeah. Mug Club. Support. And the best way to watch. Oh, that's, yeah, oh. That's, that's the thing. Quarter Black Garrett's not here. Uh, <laughs> the best way to just tune in, because notifications don't necessarily work, is it's a live show Monday through Thursday. Yep. 10 a.m. Eastern, we're back on a regular schedule, and of course you get an hour uh, in addition to uh, on Mug Club. Um, so my question to you, before I move on is, uh, with this, is um, why do you think the media, before we get to this, why do you believe the media is pushing the scare tactic, no available beds again? We were just, and before CNN went to reverse mortgage commercials, uh, <laughs> they were just talking about in Kentucky uh, extreme measures. They've been talking about yeah. how we have ICU bed sh shortages. So... Um, let me uh, – hold on a second. I want to make sure I get the right montage because we, we had to cut some, some stuff short here with uh, Donald Trump Jr. coming on. Um, oh, no, that's wrong. I have oh, – we have to run that clip of the Michael Schmerkonish from CNN. You want to do that now? No, no, no. We'll do it, we'll do it for Mug Club. Mug Club, okay. We'll do it for – You're going to love for, it. Uh, Mug Club. You're going to lose your mind. But Mug Club. But uh, 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 Dave, can you – what are you doing? Let's just stop with the uh, – Oh, jeez. Let's st he's are you, been antsy all show. He's been antsy all show. Yeah, I'm hungry. Okay, well look, look, because you guys can't see. He's shaking his leg, and uh, we have some built you bars. You forbid me from eating in the studio, Stephen. No, I didn't forbid you from eating. Yes, you did. Studio. I forbid you from you hawking were... Reese's, who are not a sponsor mm -hmm. to this show. We have some built bars in the uh, out there in the green room. Just go, 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 all go. Right, we'll fine. That. Yeah. fine. Go, go, go. Fine. Take off your take off your headphones. I have to do that. All right, let him all go, right. and. Um, <laughs> Hey Dave, you trying out those built bars? Yeah, I am. Oh, they are a symphony of flavors. 
So what flavor is that? Looks like it's a uh, birthday cake. Why don't you come over and have a taste? All right, really quick before we move on to the uh, nursing shortage, ICU bed shortage lie. It is a spot. Built Bar. Let me be really clear here. Built, no one needs to eat protein bars. Yeah. And people that I don't really use a lot of supplements. These things taste like candy bars. They're really good. You That's the only, re- yeah. the only reason I eat them is at night, I'm like, oh, I want something sweet. Yeah. I eat a Built Bar. The salted caramel is amazing. Uh, and they're double chocolate because they actually put real chocolate in the Built Bar, like coat it in dark chocolate. So Yeah, um, I eat candy in a hat, actually. I don't know if you knew that. Yeah, I have a, a hat for eating candy. So, uh, yeah, it's really it's really good. Uh, but they are really good, actually. The the, the uh, mint chocolate one. Oh, yeah, that's the that one. That one. That's, that's Tokanawan's favorite, and uh, uh, Thomas Finnegan loves the coconut. Uh, so go to Built.com, Crider 15, you get 15% off. I will say this. I was 260, a big part of it was fluid, yeah. after the, the surgery, um, two weeks I went from 233 the morning of the surgery to 260 in two weeks. So I cut out all sweets. Yeah. Then I cut out all carbohydrates. I mean, weight still kept going up, so I was panicking. Yeah. Once they removed the fluid, I was down to like 238. And then all I did was look. If I wanted to eat something that I wanted, I just would eat a built bar. And yeah. I dropped back down to 230 in another two weeks. So. Yeah, help me from eating those Reese's cups. You have thirty pounds hey. of stuff in your lungs, and you're like, <laughs> I should cut out cake. <laughs> <laughs> no idea. Maybe, maybe Michaela Peterson. I should only eat ribeye. <laughs> Um, Why are you throwing out actually, my figure? I actually did accidentally <laughs> go on did. the carnivore diet. You not, did. Well, the only reason was because I was by myself, recovering by myself, and so I would have to grill like my own steak, and it was just too much work to make vegetables. I was like, I don't like this anyway. You're like, I'm yeah. just eating two steaks a night. I'm like, what? I was like, yeah. <laughs> That's your. It, only it wasn't on purpose. <laughs> okay. I don't want no broccoli. I'm with you. No, I don't want. It's it. a lot of work for no, no flavor. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, steaming it. I don't know. Okay, so let's go through. The media has been, of course, talking about the hospital bed shortage. This is the yeah. main talking point du jour guys we may we may be five minutes late with with donald trump uh jr let him know um remember this all started so we need some context here so this information doesn't exist in a vacuum we prepared for a crazy covid surge yeah. this all started as two weeks to flatten the curve um let's go let's go The U.S. Navy hospital ship Mercy is pulling into the port behind me here in San Pedro, California. It has 1,000 much needed hospital beds, 900 medical personnel, and that is really going to help relieve the pressure on LA area hospitals during this pandemic. Couldn't make their bed when the news was coming. started to spike in Massachusetts. The state rushed to increase its hospital bed capacity. 22 News State House reporter Jody Reed joins us live from Boston. Thank and Jody, you, there are big Bateman. questions tonight yes, about exactly. whether the measures the state took early on were actually necessary. Right now, two out of the four field hospitals in the state remain empty. In fact, they never even saw a single patient. Wow. UK $6.7 million field hospital at Nutter Field House is officially closed. That word today <laughs> from UK officials. Based on the data we have now, based on the models that have been established that we have now, uh, we don't believe we'll need that field hospital. Well, that's because oh. I think I think in that case, look, that's an exception. I don't think people trusted the medical personnel at a place Was called that Jack Nutter. that Ruby, by the way? <laughs> Where are you going to Nutter? No, no, no. I'm going to get my transplant at SacTap. Yeah. <laughs> so, I hear that place is nuts. Yeah. Right? I don't know. Every time I walk in, they keep doing this and then they hit me. Yeah, it's so strange. <laughs> so childish. I keep looking at it every time. Um, and I'm going so, to ball sweat you. Yes. This is so this was the whole thing, right? Flatten the yeah, curve. Yeah. They had all of these empty hospitals and buildings. I want to make sure that you understand because now people are saying, well, we don't have enough beds. We don't have it. Well, that's partially true. Partially true. But the reason why, it's not just because of COVID. It's not just because there was a crazy surge of COVID and we weren't ready for it. No, that's actually the opposite of what happened in a lot of these cases. So now the claim is hospitals, after you just saw those empty hospitals for a very, very long time. Hospitals have no free beds now and they're over capacity. Here you go. South Carolina hospitals are once again reaching their limits due to an influx of COVID-19 patients. At the Asante Three Rivers Medical Center in Grants Pass, things are as busy as ever. 100% 100% of the patients in the Empty ICU bed. suffer from the COVID-19 virus. Warfield? The current COVID surge is still overwhelming the hospital. We are perilously close, as you mentioned in the beginning of the segment, of having, in certain areas of the country, getting so close to having full occupancy 
that you're going to be in a situation where you're going to have to make some very tough choices. Okay, so here's something uh, that a lot of people, hospitals operate close to capacity as a business model, period. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Dr. Mark Boone, the CEO of Houston Methodist Hospital, he actually explained this in August. Of, now, I'm just using this as a specific example. Right. However, this is well known as a business model for the same reason that we only bought enough studio space that we were going to use. Right, yeah. You don't want a ton of excess capacity. You don't want a ton right. of excess capacity. That's not only when you're talking about rent, when you're talking, if you're even buying this property, talking about heating, cooling, utility costs. Yeah. This is how, not to mention staffing, this is very, very commonplace. So the context matters. Let's have uh, Dr. Mark Boom talk about this from Houston Methodist. So I pulled up June 25th, 2019, exactly one year ago and said, okay, what was our ICU capacity at one year ago today? It was at 95%. We are highly experienced at utilizing our ICU beds for the sickest of the sick patients day in, day out, as I've said. And it is completely normal well, for that guy in the us bottom to right have ICU thinks that we believe he's actually in, in front of Buckingham Palace or whatever that is. Operate hospitals, how all hospitals operate. Um, what's different now, of course, is that about one in four of those ICU patients are COVID patients at our hospital system right the now. The guy in the top left so looks clearly like the that penguin means some of the non-COVID Batman ICU series. care <laughs> has already been titrated down a little to allow that level to happen. But this is an activity we do day in day out, as I've said. Um, so we have many levers at our uh, in our ability to adjust our ICU usage. And I want to get uh, to, because your your wife is a nurse. She is. And yes. we're going to get to your story in a second because it's it's very important. And she gave you permission to talk about she it. She did, yeah. And I had a recent person. run-in in a hospital. A um, pregnant nurse. Pregnant nurse. Which yeah. is like most of my Google history. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, dang. Twins! Oh. Oh. So... <laughs> Now we're also being ter- told that the, the nurses are burnt out, right? That this, yeah. they're, they're burnt out over them, despite the empty hospitals that you just saw that were built for this, uh, and that this is the reason there is a staffing shortage. Again, all of this is being crafted f- so that you believe in narrative. Crack in the front line in the battle against COVID. <laughs> nurses are burned out and considering leaving the profession altogether. The state and nation facing a nurse shortage it's only expected to get worse. Our healthcare workers are overworked. They're mentally and emotionally exhausted. And now some Valley nurses are leaving the profession to pursue other careers. Doctors and On nurses TikTok. across the United States are struggling under the burden yes. of a fourth wave of hospitalizations and deaths driven by the Delta variant and the close to 40% of Americans who remain unvaccinated. All right, listen, let's just pause that real quick because we have to move this pretty quickly. Yeah. So look, um, here's the reason that there are actually a lot of nursing shortages. It's not because all of them are burnt out despite what nurses tell you on TikTok. Many hospitals were forced to pause all elective procedures, yeah. meaning it was all hands on deck COVID, build up new hospitals for COVID exclusively and stop any treatment for anything other than COVID, even though you just heard you know, from uh, Houston Methodist, for example, at any point in time, one in four patients may be COVID. What would constitute elective procedures, by the way? Well, minor things like uh, uh, heart stints, right? Heart valve surgery, m- m- mammograms, kidney stone removal, hip and knee replacements. These were all put on pause. Back surgery. Oh, the they were all put on pause. Money. And so um, what happened was a record number of nurses were laid off. Yeah. They were laid off or they were furloughed, which is, I guess, basically they don't technically fire a nurse. Cause yeah, it's like, we don't really want to kind of fire you. We're, we're going to call you back in like three months. Well, see, the issue with Hang that on. is when I saw furlough with nurses uh, uh, about a year back, I was thinking like when they furlough prisoners, yeah. which I remember the first time I heard about that. For those who don't know, <laughs> Wait, it's what? someone who's in prison and they let them out for the weekend. That happens? That's still a thing? Yeah, Gotti had someone whacked. Yeah, he I was left, like, you furlough? Yeah, he left prison to kill someone. <laughs> he left prison to kill someone, <laughs> then walked back, into his, walked back into his 20 by 40 cell with a wine cellar. Yeah. <laughs> so... He liked wine. Okay. The point is not interchangeable terms. Nurses who've been furloughed, nurses who've had their hours cut. Uh, in April 2020, this is overlay P, yeah. a record number, 1.4 million healthcare workers. 1.4 million wow. healthcare workers were laid off or had their hours cut. That's insane. Um, and of course, uh, many of the field hospitals constructed, they never had any patients. No. A lot of the ships didn't have patients. Right. There were yeah. 77 total at uh, uh, the Mercy. Oh, wow. I think they, they need about. more ghost ships. Right. Yes. <laughs> uh, 182 total patients for the Comfort New York 
uh, in New York. 155 million spent on tents at Stony Brook University. Zero patients. Oh my gosh. So oh. just to be clear, this is a self-inflicted wound. They said we need to flatten the curve. Yeah. Okay, we need to flatten the curve and all elective procedures. And so then a record number of healthcare workers were laid off. And so what happens is you don't have the staffing for a lot of these beds that are already operating at capacity anyway. This is a self-inflicted wound because of mass media hysteria. Let's be really, really clear. Also, I would make the argument that someone who needs serious cardiovascular surgery should probably be given priority yeah. over someone with a milder case of COVID. That's just opinion. I'm not a doctor and neither are you. Well, I think they should certainly be given it over zero patients. Right. It's like I need a, a heart stint. Point. It's like, I'm sorry, there's no one here. I yes. can't help you. <laughs> So now the claim is, they've t well, nurses are quitting because of now these burdens that come with treating COVID patients. Right. So they want you to believe that now, even though there's a record number of layoffs, now a lot of nurses are leaving. And that is true. Yeah. But it's because of, they, they're just, they just can't even. This is what they're saying now. Clip, uh, clip uh, L1. L1. Penn LDI study that looked at hospital understaffing in New York and Illinois found that, quote, each additional patient per nurse was associated with significant increases in the odds of nurses reporting poor outcomes, including job dissatisfaction, intent to leave their job, and high burnout. The latest surge is pushing his health care workers to the breaking point. We've had people literally walk off the job. Uh, because I couldn't take it anymore. Somebody walking off of their shift at this hospital. We've had people. Facility. We've had people walk off their shift. They walked the right the past shift, 155 empty beds. As that is, because they just <laughs> couldn't take it anymore. In the state of Mississippi, some 2,000 nurses have quit since the pandemic. It's it's every day. I mean, just people can't take it. It's not because they don't want to do a good job. Um, we've made it really hard for them with this influx to our healthcare system. Okay, let's stress, cut this. Burnout, let's cut this because it's just going to keep going on. Stress, burnout, fatigue. Actually, no, there's another reason that there's a staffing shortage with nurses, that nurses are walking off the job. Hmm. There you go. I was actually going to ask you before, before, <laughs> pause it, pause it, before, before you come, what do you think it is? A huge portion of nurses are refusing to get the vaccine. <gasps> no. Yeah. Um, at least 153 employees, by the way, mm -mm. from Houston Methodist. Mm -hmm. Wow. They were fired for refusing the vaccine. One third of all nurses at the University of Cincinnati, uh, their medical center, said that they'd rather quit than get the vaccine. Um, in New York, 20% 20, 20 of hospital workers, all hospital workers, not vaccinated. Florida, 42%. Wow. Nationally, one in four workers have not gotten vaccinated. Now, I know you're saying oh, only 42%, only a third. Here's the thing. When you've laid off a record number yeah. of nurses because you couldn't afford them due to putting basically a moratorium on all treatment that is not COVID, right? You're probably overextended because you built new wings that you didn't need with hospitals. One third, that's 33% of nurses refusing to be vaccinated will absolutely have catas catastrophic yeah. results uh, as it relates to a labor shortage. That would happen in any industry. Rem imagine 33% of people at this show gone. 33% yeah. of people on any assembly line gone. That's a huge reason. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of these things happening at the same time, too, right? So this self-inflicted wound with some spikes in COVID, with the problem that people have this mass hysteria that they have to go to the hospital uh, if they have the sniffles, right? So this whole, like, oh, Delta variant surge thing. And it is a surge, absolutely, right? But everybody is so scared right Which now. Which I don't understand how there's a surge when 75% of Americans have received at least one We're not vaccine. doctors. We're not. We, we, can't, we can't talk about that. Don't make an inference. That's a conspiracy theory. Know, if you go, wait, right? most people are vaccinated, but there's the same number That's weird. Year last there's year. So many, <laughs> so many people. <laughs> Sick. Who would have ever thought? Go ahead. I know when I'm freaking out from being busy at a hospital, I have time to stop and talk to the news. Yes. <laughs> What's well, Gerald? Gerald is reading something. Or, or, uh... Don Jr. can extend until 1030. Oh, okay. Wonderful. Okay. Um, we, we got him. So let's be really clear here, though, because I do want to tell a story here, uh, Gerald, and I'll, I'll tell my story there for Mug Club, but... You okay. can't also argue that nurses are, are, are leaving because, let's say right now, they're not being paid fairly. No, as a matter of fact, hospitals want these nurses so badly <laughs> that they, it's, you know how it's a buyer's market? It's a nurse's market right now. Uh, yeah. Massive sign-on bonuses, upwards of $100 an hour, right? Th these are more than some doctors make. Yeah. Certainly some, uh, like I think, uh, or other people who are... 
who have attended ho- more medical school than nursing. People yeah. like some anesthesiologists, physicians, assistants. Miami area hospitals, they're paying 80, uh, 85 to $105 an hour, $1,200 a week in travel expenses. Yeah. Baylor, Scott, and White is offering a $15,000 sign-on bonus. Why? Because right now, there are enough nurses. They're not just going, I'm stressed. They're saying, I'm, I don't... I don't want to get this vaccine. Whether you think they're crazy, stupid, or not, because you'll say that we're yeah. not doctors, well, guess what? They do work in the medical field, and a significant portion, certainly enough to disrupt the supply chain of nurses, have said they will quit sooner than get a vaccination. And Gerald, your wife, yeah. is a nurse, and I, we have permission to talk about this. Yeah, yeah, she's a nurse. And so when we talked about what people should do with forced vaccines, which is coming up, October 1st, I think, is the deadline for a lot of people in different hospital systems around yeah. the country uh, where they have to have the vaccination or be very, very, very clear about this, be fired. Immediate, there is no grace. There is nothing after that. You don't go on like some administrative leave. You don't have to work from home. You are fired. You are done. There are nurses right now that are just walking off the job. Like we've heard stories in the nursing community of 20 people on one shift saying, we're just going to leave. Yeah. In one shift of some of the best of the best workers that these hospitals have leaving and going away. And so my wife. Mid catheter. Well, exactly. Like, ah, you're going to have to take it out yourself. It's self lubricating, though. I saw a commercial. I'll <laughs> oh, make it easier for you. Hold it on the table, whack it with a hammer, break there it like a Kit Kat. Oh, geez. I got an inch in. The rest is up to you. <laughs> So my wife was given the choice, right? Okay, get the vaccine or or be fired. Yeah. And so at the time... Your pregnant wife. Well, so we, we didn't know that at the time. She's breastfeeding right now. We were a little concerned about that. There are several reasons that we're worried about this, but sure. we're not anti-vax at all. My no! wife actually made fun of me for saying, hey, you should watch this thing about vaccination early on in our relationship. So it was, it was kind of funny. We're not even close to that. Then we find out my wife is pregnant. And my wife works from home 100% of the time. She never even goes near the hospital. And my wife has a note from her OBGYN who said, I would not recommend you take this. And she has it from her primary care provider unsolicited. She didn't say, give me a note. She said, what do you think about this? Yes. And then give me a note uh, to that, whatever you say. So she's got all of that. And she's in her first trimester. Do you know what they do with first trimester pregnant women? They give you nothing. They say, well, if that, you're in the Air Force, they give you a stretchy well, flight a stretchy, suit. Well, you need it, right? Yeah. You start to show a little Combat bit. Combat armor. Yeah. yeah. So they give you nothing. They say, look, in the first trimester, you need to be as careful as humanly possible. And you know what they're telling my wife right now? None of that matters. Yeah. None of that matters. You are going to have to get the vaccine and put your- Well, the hospital health. where your wife works. Right. Yeah. yeah. Not her doctors. No, no, no. No. The hospital where yeah. she works. I'm not going to- I'm not going to- And to be her. clear- they've been Just great to be clear, past. your wife, I would assume- wouldn't take ivermectin while she's in her first trimester either. My wife won't take ibuprofen while she while she's yeah. pregnant. Well, well, we tell women not to eat soft cheese or shellfish or all of these other things, and we're telling them to take a vaccine right now that they have to mandate have to have to have a job. Right. And by the way, guess what happens if she gets fired on October first? Healthcare gone. Now my wife's pregnant without health care. Yeah, well, also to be fair, your wife, though, tell people this, and then we're going to bring Donald Trump Jr. on. Yeah. She was offered a job. So just to give you an example, because this hospital requires vaccinations, there have been mass walk-offs, and this has been happening at a lot of hospitals, yeah. but a hospital that does not require Yeah, there's several hospitals that don't require this. One of, one of the things was that Miami job was like seven or eight grand a week. No, for your wife. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So tell them. I was talking about that in general. Your wife was specifically offered what? A signing bonus? I think it was a signing bonus of like ten thousand dollars, but it was through those offers, right? So she right. was she's in that group. She's an ICU qualified nurse, which is right. the top, top level that you can be. Ten I think it was like a ten thousand dollar signing bonus and a huge uh, uh, hourly rate that the bonus rate or sorry, the overtime rate on that Miami job that we showed, two twenty five an hour. Yeah. Two twenty five an hour and thirty six hours is full time. They wanted you to do forty eight. So you can do the math. It's Absolutely. an amazing amount of money being offered to people right now wow, yeah. because of what the hospitals are doing to them exactly for no other reason they're literally what reason can you possibly think of for somebody who works from home 100 percent of the time and you didn't give them and an is exception. pregnant first trimester yeah you didn't give them an exception if you come to the campus you have to have the vaccine right what possible reason could there be yeah and then they, and then they blame you and say oh stop playing politics with science well hold on a second the science says that a first yeah. trimester pregnant woman should be taking a vaccine with no long-term st- look that's anything like you've said yeah. when my wife was first trimester pregnant all of us we were we were borderline obsessive, yes. okay? It is not unreasonable at this point. It doesn't make you anti-vax at all. You can say, hey, a 70-year-old who's not pregnant makes sense. A 32-year-old who is per- first trimester working from home, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. That is the issue that is going on right now. And they're playing politics with science. And now we are creating a labor shortage. And here's something, too. A lot of people out there will offer anecdotal evidence 
there can be a regional problem. In other words, this kind of situation can create a problem, let's say, in Houston, Texas, where they are overburdened. Absolutely. And you go to a hospital and go, oh, it was crazy full. Yeah. And then you go to a hospital in Miami and they say, well, you can go to any hospital you want. We're, we're running like clockwork, right? So two things can be true. You can anecdotally experience seamless care right now or horrible care yeah. depending how woke the hospital wants to virtue signal if we have uh, him on do we have a stinger here mm -hmm. uh, coming on the show right now of course Ooh. we are thrilled uh, to have him he's always a lot of fun and we get some good stuff is uh, Donald Trump Jr. Stinger <laughs> all right Mr. On, Trump how are you sir I'm doing good. How are you doing? I I am do, I'm doing better. Thank you for asking. You know, it's a little bit tough on the uh, on the breathing front. You look like you're tan and and slim. Is it uh, less stressful being? Uh... Uh, you know, living in Florida is uh, is good compared to you know New York. I can. It's just so much more active naturally. It's uh it's a little bit better. Uh, I just it's a no brainer. Um. Okay. I have so many questions for you. First off, you're competing the fight yeah. with your with with your dad this weekend. Evander Holyfield versus Vitor Belfort, right? Yes. Okay, which which roided up guy are you are you rooting for? Well, listen, I, what's sort of funny is when I was talking <laughs> to my dad about it, we, we got into some of this because we watched the first one when they did, uh, you know, the Tyson Roy Jones fight. Yeah, uh, we watched it from Camp David as like a family and just had a good time. And it was sort of amazing listening to my father talk about boxing because you see all the things that he does, but you forget that like. All those decades in Atlantic City. I mean, I, he hosted like UFC one. Or, you know, yeah, early he on. He hosted all of those big fights. And so I'm listening to him talk about all of these fighters. He was like, you know, when that guy was fighting at 187, it was, and I'm just like, oh my God, like th this is sort of amazing. And so his fight knowledge is actually pretty incredible. And so, uh, you know, I, I know the guys over at Triller. I was going anyway. I've been, you know, and we're like, this could be really fun and really cool. And I, I think it will be. I mean, so it's, you know, Saturday night. Uh, my father's going to be commentating on all of those fights, and some of them are friends. You know, Tito Ortiz, obviously, right? I, he's been a huge supporter politically, but he's been a friend for years. I mean, he did, uh, you know, even in his prime, he was doing, you know, did The Apprentice and right. uh, all of that stuff. So, you know, Vitor Belfort's a friend. Evander, you know, did a lot with my father in all of those fights. And uh, like I said, the most fascinating thing was listening to my father talk about the history and how much recall he had about some of the behind-the-scenes stuff when those guys, you know, were, were fighting. At, in Atlantic City, in front of him. Yeah, I mean, he's he's been a combat uh, sport fan for a long time. I'm hoping that uh, I'm hoping that you and your your dad don't get as high as Snoop Dogg and Oscar De La Hoya did at the last one they were commentating. <laughs> I hope you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah listen, uh, you know, we're, we're two teetotalers, but uh, you know, I imagine uh, it's still Trump and Trump. So you know, there's probably uh, there's not a lot of filter going on in there. I mean, that's right. Of, you know, Tourette's of you know. Just Tourette's. We right? don't need you, to throw in. Social, it's Tourette's of the thumbs. Over there, it's just going to be Tourette's. Yeah, we don't need to throw in the shrooms. I mean, Oscar De La Hoya, I remember when I was like, go, go, little body. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. He is beautiful. You are beautiful. I was like, shut up, James Blunt. So, um, let me, okay, moving away. From, and, and that is where can people tune in really quickly? Because this is something I will be uh, watching. Yeah, it's, it's pay-per-view on Saturday night. Uh, Triller's putting it on. You can just check out any of the links on my social media. They'll, it'll take you there. Uh, but yeah, Saturday night he's going to be commentating on all of those fights uh, down here in uh, you know Fort Lauderdale. Just going to be a lot of fun, uh, good card, a lot of friends involved. It's just going to be a good time. I think uh, you know a bunch of the even current fighters and some of the UFC guys that are going to be there because so much of that is based in South Florida. Yeah. You know they're going to come up and join us and talk. I think you know I, I've heard Jorge Masvidal is going to be there. I heard Michael Chandler is going to be there. A couple other guys. So uh, you know it should be a lot of fun uh, getting their commentary as well and just. You know, watching those guys interact with my dad and myself. Yeah, it uh, it sounds like it's going to be fun. Now, I'm going to shift gears here a little bit. Uh, obviously, with your dad having been out of office, but you guys have been having rallies. Um, for me, I wanted to, and obviously I was still recovering, so I, I haven't spoken with, uh, with you in a while. Um, what was it like, or what did you think, with former Vice President Joe Biden attempting to blame his Afghanistan disaster on the Trump administration. That for me was, yeah. look, let me tell you where I line up really quickly so that that way we, I, I think if yeah. someone acts like they don't understand the difference between withdrawing American allies, ambassadors, citizens being protected by the troops and then taking out the troops last while leveling all of our military bases, if they don't understand the difference between that and withdrawing our military protection before yeah. our citizens, I think they're being intellectually disingenuous. But this was something the media really, they even kind of admitted Biden did a bad job, but then they pivoted really quickly and said, actually, it's, it's Donald Trump's yeah. fault. What was that like, being it, it, in your shoes? 
I mean, it was ridiculous. I mean, I mean, you can even see it. Like, it's like, oh, wow, they're losing the press. And they were desperately trying to, but it was so bad. Even they couldn't defend it. And, you know, you're right. There is, there is a difference. I, I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, no, no, we should have stayed in Afghanistan for the next two millennia. Like, <laughs> right. no one thinks that. Uh, other than maybe the military industrial complex and some of those DC people that are going to get the Raytheon board seat and be rich for the rest of their lives. I mean, that's their retirement. Plan. John Bolton you know, is going other- to be cryogenically frozen just yeah. so he can check in in 2000 years and make sure we're still in Afghanistan. But yes. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, other than those people, no one thinks we should still be at war. But, you know, I think Joe Biden and really it's a Democrat problem. They're so used to the media running cover for them, blaming anyone else, frankly, blaming everyone else. Uh, he didn't think that changing the plan that my father had worked on and negotiate would, would be a problem, right? I mean, he he delayed the entire withdrawal till now. Now is the fighting season. That's when these you know animals come out of the caves after a long winter, uh, and they're bored, so they're going to go fight and kill stuff. I mean, you ask any guy that's boots on the ground, and they'll tell you this. Uh, you know, so many of my friends that were involved and were fighting over there, they're like, I mean, I can't even believe it. Now, our generals probably don't know that because they've been so busy pushing critical race theory and wanting to learn about white rage, uh, you know, that they didn't think that that would be a factor. But Joe Biden was so used to the press covering for him that he was like, hey, man, you know what? If I do this, I can delay till September 11th and I can get that incredible photo op, you know, like the Kamala Harris photo op a thousand miles away from the border. Like, right. as long as you're kind of <laughs> sort of traveling to the like, you're on a border, right. it may not be the border, uh, yeah. it may not be you know near the epicenter of where the problem is. But we checked that box, we showed off and now we will allow the media to do their job as our marketing department. You know, So when he was losing the media, even still, it was like, but think about it. You honestly think. That Trump would have left, you know, eighty billion dollars worth of equipment. Do you honestly think that Trump, if he saw this coming, wouldn't have been droning, you know, the caravans of cars coming in to take it? You know, you think he would have maybe pulled out the civilians first? I mean, Joe Biden, what he really wanted is he wanted to make it his own. He wanted to get the credit for actually doing this. Right. So he changed what was a negotiated plan. He eliminated all conditions so that he could get a photo op and take full credit for it because they're so used to getting credit for doing nothing uh, as long as they're present because that's what's happened in our country, in our system, you know, that it's asinine. I mean, to think, you know, that our military, we have generals that got on press conferences. We, we had no way, we had no way of knowing that this could have possibly happened. I'm like, I don't know, I'll scroll through Instagram, I'll see videos of some of these you know afghan fighting forces that we tra- they can't do a jumping jack you know what i'm talking about i know like, exactly what really? you're talking about like, they're on they're, yeah, they're on the elliptical with a rocket launcher going backwards yeah i was like you couldn't see this coming like i, I was like i don't know like i could see it coming and let's just say i know absolutely nothing about this and i could see it coming or blinken but did you see that- hear blinken's quote we just played that earlier in the show where he said uh where uh, we are concerned that they don't have any women. I'm like, well, who would have thought that no, was yeah, going to no. happen? Well, I, I, I did something for, you know, a video for Facebook on this last night. And it's like, really? Like, really? Like, you had no idea. You're, you're totally shocked that the Taliban was not, <laughs> didn't turn out to be the all-inclusive uh, and gender-representing uh, administration. That, I mean... <laughs> I like the, I keep the Taliban watching, is like, not a mundane episode. detail, Michael. <laughs> South Park. It's like if you animated South Park and turned it into a real life movie, that is this administration. And that's what you get when you have an administration whose only focus has been diversity. Meaning, you know, it's wonderful that they have this incredibly diverse cabinet. Are they competent? I don't know. It doesn't <laughs> seem like that was even a criteria. Like if competence intelligence knowledge experience is not a criteria but like you know finding some sort of magical unicorn that checks off a lot of boxes you know that's what you get and this is the result of it yeah it's not just afghanistan you know it's the border uh it's inflation it's all of these things and and we're getting to the point where even today's insanely biased media can no longer cover for the clown show that is there i mean you have the Secretary of State on TV not just saying he's shocked, shocked that the Taliban was not as inclusive and diverse. I mean, I'm like, I don't know. Again, I, <laughs> no, I, th- I think I, you do. I, I, it's not like they don't have 
20 years of experience realizing that the Taliban could give a shit about <laughs> diversity or inclusion, you know? But by the way, that will not stop the UN from putting the Taliban or their representatives on like a human rights council because that's the batshit <laughs> world in which we live today, Stephen. Yeah. You know, know it's coming. No, you I know it's coming. I absolutely do like, know that it's I it, think it's one hundred percent coming. They're going to have a seat at the table at the UN. They'll probably even put them on some like the Council for Women's Rights. I mean Iran I think was on there and some of these other crazy <laughs> regimes. Like because we live in a clown world. Yeah. And you know that's the it's like addiction. I think you know America's going to have to hit rock bottom for them to realize it. I've said this for months now and it, like every day I wake up and be like okay, like we're at rock bottom I'm like man, like, God, we're not even close. Like <laughs> yeah. two weeks ago I thought we were at rock bottom like, and now I'm looking up rock like, bottom uh, then Blinken's like did someone say auger? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, look, if you're our ally, imagine you're an American ally, you know, who's who's making decisions, you know, under the assumption, the false assumption now, but what would have historically been a good assumption that America will be there to have your back. I mean, we don't even have the backs of our own citizens. Yeah, we don't even have the backs of the people who helped us. Now, that doesn't prevent us from airlifting. A uh, hundred thousand unvetted Afghans, some of whom are on terrorist watch lists. Of course. Uh, some of whom are convicted rapists. We take care of them before we do our own citizens, which is like the most Joe Biden slash really Democrat Party like decision ever. It's like going back to the Obama Biden days, where it's like you you saw him talking about it the other day because four of the five people that they traded for a traitor, Bo Bergdahl that were in Guantanamo. We had five Taliban terrorists in Guantanamo yeah. Bay because they were bad guys. We traded those five people for a traitor who deserted Americans, who had Americans go out and look for him, some of whom were killed. Yeah. We traded to get this piece of shit back. <laughs> we traded five <laughs> Taliban terrorists, yeah. okay? And four of them are now sitting on, like, the council. Yes, and, and you know what? By the way, let me – that reminds me to fact-check myself. Yesterday, I said three ah. for Bo Bergdahl. It was four. We forgot – you always yeah. forget that fourth. Mm. You think yeah, third's the charm. And by the, the way, charm. they'll use that to deplatform you even if you're helping their – like, it wasn't yeah. that bad. It was only three yes, I, of the five. Yeah, I said yeah. three when it was four. They'll fact-check you and ding you, so let's be clear that it's four – piece of shit terrorist yeah. or one piece of shit traitor like <laughs> that's like the most obama biden deal ever i know like, and they tried is, to and i i will come that's in here like the democrat party platform like summed up in one sentence these clowns are now running the taliban and we're saying you know and over the last few weeks i'm watching the secretary of state i'm watching the generals well uh we we are gonna have to ask permission of the taliban to see if maybe we can get our citizens who we abandoned after leaving the dogs, after leaving military equipment, you know, and not just military equipment. It's also like a couple M4s. I mean, they have freaking Apaches. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you know, I know. Way, they're Blackhawks. They're selling them to the Chinese who are reverse engineering them. And within about two weeks, they will have a helicopter that will destroy the Apache after we spend billions in R&D and years developing it. The Chinese now will have that. They will reverse That's engineer it to create a better piece of equipment for two cents on the dollar after we spent trillions in development. That's how the world works. The Chinese are now talking about taking over Bagram Air Force Base that we sunk billions in. That would have been a nice place to maybe have a presence essentially on the border of China. But our genius military really focused on white rage and critical race theory and teaching us that diversity will somehow make us a stronger fighting force. No one who actually fights understands even remotely how that is possible, but our generals do, and they have told us it uh, distinctly. If you question that, you will be thrown out of the military. We've seen that. Yeah. Now, if you're a, you know, a lunatic uh, preaching the leftist BS that they're talking about on a daily basis, you will likely be promoted. Uh, you know, see them. You see the conservative purge in the military. I saw it. I have friends in the SEAL teams, like literally operators, like doing. They they have told me verbatim, they spend more time in diversity training than they do shooting. Yeah, SEAL teams. Okay, so imagine what they're doing with like, you know, less elite, you know, forms. Imagine who's taking this over when the military is paying for your transgender surgery and highlighting it. Right? <laughs> You've seen the highlight reels, like menstruating people. Yes. The, I am, I am, 
I have incredible anxiety. I can barely function in the real world. I have no idea what's going on around me. But the CIA was incredibly welcoming, and I am your first line of defense. I'm saying, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> and then, remember this? You know what I'm talking about, right? I know exactly I'm what you're talking this. about. Yes. <laughs> this guy, he's a wonderful person, I'm sure. He is probably not capable of going to the supermarket without being in fear. Right. He is leading, like, our, our charges in the intelligence community against, like, China and Russia. You think, like, they're looking at that and being like, Oh, wow, we got a problem here, you think? Sweet. Like, if, if you're China, your plans, which were inevitable, probably, but your right. plan to take over Taiwan just accelerated. Whatever it used to be, it's like 1% of that. Yeah, like, no. Within I, weeks, probably. I agree. Because they know America's got no balls. Well, hold on a second. We, I want to I want to continue that. We're going to go here to Mug Club where you can, you know, really let it rip, I guess. But, no, I agree with you. I think they want the military. Am milit I holding back, Stephen? No, 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 no. It's perfect. Not, but, uh, I just don't want to be accused of being low energy. Yeah, no. It's just with, with if we talk <laughs> about COVID at all, I guarantee you will be removed. So I want to avoid that one. That's just, that's no longer a mine field. It's one big mine with no more field left. Uh, I will say this. Yeah, they want, they want us to turn the military into... To, we have great members in the military, like you've talked about. There's different yeah, pe people on the ground and people at the desk. They want to turn them from, uh, 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 what was it, missing in action to, to that shitty little planeteer with the power of hearts. And that's not how it works in the real world. We're going to continue with Donald Trump Jr. Uh, at Mug Club. People join up. Crowder, come back. You get $20 off. YouTube, it's time for YouTube. Piss off, Lou.